with our county to rotate between Antelope Valley and Santa Cruz on the MTA so you would have greater representation at the MTA when they allot the money. Because for too many years, the West Side and the City of Los Angeles has using, been using your funds to fund subways to nowhere. And as a result, you have been jeopardized by that. But having a new member on that body would help uh, a fair distribution of those funds. Sad to say that legislation was defeated. I believe it was on a 2 4 and 4 against the vote uh, last month in the state legislature. But we will continue to work on that effort. The North County Transit Connected Working Group, to enhance that uh, area in North County, I had created the North County, uh, uh, this group, which consists of from Santa Cruz Transit, Jim Gonzalez, Antelope Valley Transit Authority, Randy Floyd, their MTA, Metrolink, Steve Lance, Access Services, Arun Broom, and Los Angeles DOT, Chung Ming Yang. This group will improve coordination among various transit agencies that serve this part of the county. Indirect impact projects is the I-5 HOV lanes from the 118 to 134. And while this is outside Santa Cruz, these extensions create a network for Santa Cruz Valley residents from Castaic to Glendale once all HOV lane improvements on the I-5 are completed. Every linkage on the HOV network will improve longer distance commute trips to and from the rest of the county. The start date for that is next month, June of 2009 and will be completed in 2013. So eat your broccoli so you'll be around for that. <laughs> the High Desert Corridor, you know, about 20, 27, 28,000 trucks a day are idling at the ports. 70% of all the goods that come out of our ports go outside our county lines. So we are working to develop the inland ports so that the cargo coming out could be used, transported by a rail to the Antelope Valley, and via rail to the San Bernardino County, some have even considered via rail to Riverside County, and then have the trucks take those goods throughout the rest of the country. This is going to alleviate a lot of congestion and a lot of the pollution that occurs when we have these trucks idling at the ports. So this corridor is to, uh, uh, it's a large, is to uh, link the I-5 and the I-15. Currently is, uh, is the 120 since expansion it will be all the way to the I-15. This corridor will provide a northern truck bypass through the Antelope Valley to connect the I-5 and I-15 via State Route 138, eliminating for all those trucks to ever enter the Santa Cruz Valley, much less the entire 20, uh, 210 corridor. We are looking at the revenue uh, study being commissioned this year. Next year, the traffic revenue study will be completed, the federal reauthorization funding made available, and Metro funding for environmental study of the project, we've already committed $33 million, and the environmental study has been commissioned. In 2013, that study will be completed, and then in 2013, and through a public-private partnership, we're looking to uh, begin the construction on that. So all the more reason to eat that broccoli. Mm -hmm. the, inland, uh, the, the inland port timeline, many of the agencies uh, have a stake in that, from the ports to the cities to the county, trucking industry, the railroads. Anybody here from the railroads? They are the worst to work with. <laughs> you may know arrogant people, but you don't know the railroads. You know, they, they build the Alameda Corridor, so take the, the goods from the port and take it out to the, to the county line, and then they stop at the LA city border. So the 25 cities in the uh, San Diego Valley have we're going to have two and a half mile trains seven days a week, and there are 55 sections that were not mitigated next to schools, next to the founding, the, the uh, San Gabriel mission that Father Sarah founded. And trying to get them to help pay for that, it's like it's crazy. So we're trying to get them involved in the in ports. They are the agency that benefits, but they want you, the taxpayer, to pay for it, which is so stupid. But they're going to want you to pay for it, and they're going to take the, uh, the revenue. So we're, we're negotiating with them to be a little more Judeo-Christian in their values. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let me say, this all comes down to why we expanded the Santa Cruz Valley. We're very pleased and that the, uh, after the de devastating fire that took place, uh, we were able to 
find a, a new location for the mental health center, and this delivers an array of services. Last August, we, we opened it. Some of you were there at that ceremony, and it's a 4,500 square foot uh, larger than the old office. It has a larger lobby, has more parking spaces. It will serve 100 to th up to uh, nearly 200 clients a day, and it, over uh, nearly 2,000 patients were seen during the fiscal year 2007-2008. Uh, their office has uh, worked with our office, Virgin, and, and the community with a very effective outreach program. Aside from hosting the first mental health community forum in Santa Cruz, the department has advertised their programs to members in our schools and community organizations. Their services may be directly provided by county operated mental health facilities, private agencies that are contracted with the department, or community based agencies that partner with mental health to create a network of care. It costs the county approximately $197 for one primary care visit at a county rent clinic, where well, it costs $94 at a private, public private partnership clinic. So we are working with the Department of Health to expand these types of health centers to ensure that we can provide greater care without loading, burdening our emergency rooms, which many people, sad to say, we have an element that uses emergency rooms as their health center which create long backlogs, long lines, long delays, and getting them diverted to health center at a fraction of cost will help their needs, while those who have emergency needs will have their needs met more quickly. So anyway, these are some of the issues that we have been addressing, and uh, I want to appreciate my staff. Uh, Roz Wyman out here has done an incredible job.